which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, got a replacement for Scoop today back there, huh? Morning, Reggie. How are you? Missed you Saturday. The cake was good. Yeah, well, I was out in knee-deep and other stuff. <laughs> you and much of the county. Yeah. Probably. Didn't have time for a party. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Item number one. Um, we're going to approve the minutes of the August 8th meeting with some corrections. Uh, let's see. We look at the minutes. On page two of the minutes, halfway down. Um, it's the one, two, three, four, fifth motion down. Um, it should say that's the one with Thomas Prince. It should say uh, 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 minimum of 40 hours. And then on page. Not minimum, just 40 hours. It's not salary. Oh, I'm sorry, just 40 hours. That's right. And on page four. Uh, under the motion for the second one down, uh, under the county office building, partial roof, <clears throat> that should say 9 a.m., not just 9. And then the motion before the public comment, that motion was by Commissioner Warren and seconded by Commissioner Arnold. So those are the corrections to the minutes. With that, can I get a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve with those corrections. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Allen, approve the minutes for those stated corrections of August 8th. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number two. Make a motion to recess the commissioner's meeting and open a salary board meeting at 9 01. <coughs> I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Allen, to recess the commissioner's meeting and open the salary board at 9 01. All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Now to the salary board. All right, item one. Make a motion to approve the minutes from the August 8th meeting. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, second by Commissioner Arnold. Approve the minutes of the August 8th meeting. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number two. Uh, at this time, I'd make a motion to amend the salary of the non-union position of county detective, uh, school resource officer, um, at a per diem rate of $160 per day not to exceed $29,760 per year. I'll second that. What was the change in that one? I think it was a, it was, the change was, we had the generalized substitute. it. Yes. Right. Yes. And the change is a substitute. Why exactly. do use a substitute? Yeah. All was right. the word substitute within there before? No. I don't think so. Okay. No. No, it didn't allow the original agreement with the dis with the original agreement did not allow for uh, the uh, substitute, but right. this does. Yep. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. All right. So carried. Thank you. Have yeah. a great day. Thank you. We'll see what happens. All right. Thank you. Item number three. Um, motion to eliminate the full-time position, union-eligible position of intake officer, effective at the end of business, August 22nd, per the recommendation of President Judge Lake. I'll second that. Motion by Court Administrator Kathy Hawley, second by Commissioner Warren, to approve item three, eliminate the full-time union-eligible position of intake officer. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Item four. A uh, motion to eliminate a full-time union-eligible position of conference officer effective August 22nd per recommendation of President Judge Lake. Second. Motion by Court Administrator Kathy Hawley, signed by Commissioner Warren, to item four, eliminate the full-time union-eligible position of conference officer. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item five. Motion to eliminate the full-time union-eligible position of conference officer slash court liaison, <coughs> effective end of business August 22nd, by a further recommendation of President Judge Lake. Second. Motion by Court Administrator Kathy Holly, signed by Commissioner Warren, to approve item 5, to eliminate full-time union-eligible position of conference officer slash court liaison. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Item 6. A motion to eliminate the full-time duty eligible position of enforcement officer effective in the end of business, August 22nd, 2018, per recommendation of President Judge Lake. Second. Second. Motion by Court Administrator Hunt and Kathy Hawley, signed by Commissioner Warren, to approve item 6, to eliminate the full-time duty eligible position of enforcement officer. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 7. Motion to eliminate the full-time union eligible position of financial enforcement officer effective end of business August 22nd, 2018 per the recommendation of President Judge Lake. Second. Motion by Court Administrator Kathy Hawley, signed by Commissioner Warren to approve item 7, eliminate the full-time union eligible position of financial enforcement officer. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, item number eight. Motion to, to excuse me, create the full-time union eligible position of case intake specialist, 1148 per hour, grade 13 with benefits, according to the union contract, uh, effective August 22nd, 2018, per the recommendation of President Judge Lake. Second. Motion by Court Administrator Kathy Hawley, signed by Commissioner Arnold, to approve item eight, create the full-time union eligible position of case intake specialist. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Item number nine. Motion to create two full-time union eligible positions of enforcement specialist slash court liaison. 1148 per hour, grade 13 with benefits according to the bargaining unit, uh, effective August 22nd, 2018, per the recommendation of President Judge Lake. Second. Motion by Court Administrator Kathy Hawley, second by Commissioner Warren. To approve item number nine on the agenda, create two full-time union eligible positions enforcement specialist slash court liaison. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Item 10. Motion to create two full-time union eligible positions of establishment specialist slash court liaison, 1148 per hour, grade 13, with benefits according to the union contract, uh, effective August 22nd, 2018, per the recommendation of President Judge Lake. Second. Motion by Court Administrator Kathy Alley, second by Commissioner Warren, approve item 10, create two full-time union eligible positions of a staff and specialist court liaison. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 So carry. Any public comment on the salary board? Yes. Just to clarify, the new positions just replace all the ones you eliminated? Yeah, what it is is there is uh, there's a lot of changes in that office. Um, instead of one person being solely having one job, now they're all cross-trained to the point where, you know, more people go into the courtroom instead of just one or two people. So everybody's cross-trained. Plus, with the uh, recent Supreme Court order, uh, the domestic relations files that were in the Prothonotary's office will be moving back up to domestic relations. They'll have to maintain those and service those also. So that there's a whole change in okay. the uh, scope of what people do up there. Now, do these changes don't reflect <coughs> changes in their I assume the same people are in the positions that were. Well, we don't have changing? a lot of people up there. So if you get into the next, when we get back to the uh, uh -huh. commissioner's meeting, you'll see some of the changes there. I do believe that one person, because of the grade change from a 12 to a 13, okay. they're getting a, a slight bump with that. Okay. Too. okay. But there was no other changes. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Any other public comment? Can I get a motion to close? Make a motion to close the salary board and reopen the <coughs> commissioner's meeting at 908. I second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, second by Commissioner Arnold to close the salary board and return to the commissioner's meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Did you uh, make that change in the yes. job description? Yes. Did you send them back down yes, to Brian? He, yes, he has everything. All right, thank you. Yeah. All right, now we're back to item number three. Make a motion to approve item number three as listed on the agenda. <coughs> I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, second by Commissioner Allen, approve item three on the agenda to approve or ratify the cash disbursements, electronic payments. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item four. I'll make a motion to approve item number four as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, second by Commissioner Arnold to approve item four on the agenda <coughs> to approve the uh, following seminar request under payments. Questions or comments? Just so you know, the, uh, you'll see some of our employees taking a defensive driving course. It's not because our employees are bad drivers. Uh, it's because if we do that, it gives a, a discount on our uh, insurance. So, 
any place we can get a few extra bucks from somebody, we do that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number five. Make a motion to approve item number five is listed on the agenda. <coughs> I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Warren, approved item 5 on the agenda, to ratify and acknowledge the hiring of Jesse Pruitt of Halstead to the open union eligible position of Deputy Sheriff, effective August 13th. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. All right. So carry. Item number 6. Make motion to approve item number 6 as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Arnold, to ratify and accept the resignation of Michael Apisardi from position of corrections officer. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 7. Make a motion to approve item number 7 as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, second by Commissioner Arnold to approve item 7 on the agenda to ratify the termination of Angelo Vitale from the position of IT Specialist Administrator. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 So carry. Item number 8. Make a motion to approve item number 8 as listed on the agenda. <coughs> I'll second that. Motion by Christian Warren, second by Christian Arnold, approve item 8 on the agenda to ratify and acknowledge the hiring of Sidney Warner Montrose to the open union eligible position of civil criminal clerk, effective August 20th, 2018, uh, for the recommendation of Sheriff Lance Maddox. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Item number 9. Make a motion to approve item number 9 as listed <coughs> on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Arnold to approve item 9 on the agenda. Acknowledge with regret the resignation of Cambria Ely from the position of Director of Domestic Relations, effective August 21st, 2018, for the recommendation of President Judge Jason Lane. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number 10. Make a motion to approve item number 10 as listed <coughs> on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Arnold to approve item 10 on the agenda. Acknowledge the transfer of Michelle Jerome. From the position of Assistant Director of Domestic Relations to the open full-time non-union position of Director of Domestic Relations at 49500 with no schedule increases for 2019, effective August 22nd, 2018, for the recommendation of President Judge Jason Lake. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carry. Item 11. Make a motion to approve item number 11 as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Arnold, approve item 11 on the agenda to acknowledge the transfer of Linda Daly from the position of intake officer to the open full-time union eligible position of case intake specialist. No change in rate of pay, effective August 23rd, 2018, for the recommendation of President Judge Jason Lake. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number 12. Aye. It's still the same, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve item number 12 as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, second by Commissioner Arnold, to acknowledge the transfer of Diana Snow from the position of Enforcement Officer to the open full-time eligible union-eligible position of Enforcement Specialist Court Liaison, no change in rate of pay. Effective August 23rd, for the recommendation of President Judge Jason Lake. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 13. Make a motion to approve item number 13 as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, second by Commissioner Arnold to acknowledge the transfer of Angela Holleran from the position of conference officer to the open full-time union eligible position of establishment specialist court liaison at 1148 per hour, effective August 23rd, uh, 2018, per the recommendation of President Jason Lake, Judge Jason Lake. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 14. Make a motion to approve item number 14 as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, second by Commissioner Allen, to approve item 14 on the agenda, to acknowledge and regret the resignation of uh, Terry Lynn Wickheiser from the position of financial officer, enforcement officer, effective August 23rd, uh, with regret from recommendation of President Judge Jason Lake. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 15. Make motion to approve item number 15 as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Arnold, approve item 15 on the agenda, approve the hiring of Jerry Fassett Jr. of Montrose, the open union eligible position of part time corrections officer, for the recommendation of Warden Shelf. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 16. Make a motion to approve item number 16 as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. 
Push my commission warrants and my commissioner Allen approved item 16 on the agenda to approve the following tax claim and bureau exoneration request as so stated. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number 17. make a motion to approve item number 17 um, up to $180 per diem. Right. <coughs> the last per the recommendation doesn't need to be on this one. All right, so we got a motion. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, second by Commissioner Allen, approve item 17 to sign the purchase service agreement between Susquehanna County Services for Children and Youth and Youth House for the term of July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019, inclusive for the following programs only, shelter care at a $180 per diem. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 18. Make a motion to approve item number 18 as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warner and second by Commissioner Arnold to approve item 18 to approve the change order in the amount of 165000 075 with CMD waterproofing for the courthouse, uh, cornice cladding, uh, cast column top, silk flashing, lower banding, molding, replacement, brick, power washing and sealing, and dome coating. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's a mouthful. <laughs> item 19. I make a motion to approve item number 19 as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Arnold to approve item 19 on the agenda uh, to approve purchase of the Unison Open Elect Voting System from Election IQ, Akron, Ohio, for the purchase price of $265,215, pending legal review and approval by the county solicitor. You're fine with the approval added, both of you? Yes, yes. Okay, questions or comments? So you understand what that is? That replaces all our election machines. It replaces the the uh, um, the auto marks that are out at the the uh, polling stations, which are how old are those now? Pretty old. Pretty old. <laughs> uh, and it replaces the two six fifties downstairs that we use to count the ballots on election night. Um, this is an entirely different system. It's a regular, basically looks like a desktop scanner. Replaces the six fifties. Uh, it's pretty impressive and it, they run r real well. So we also are hoping that even though we have this price on here, um, there is word that the state, of course, is going to do funding for all the uh, election uh, areas for uh, equipment because across the state of Pennsylvania, everything is antiquated and outdated. So if funding does come available, we have checked with the Department of State even though if we move forward with this, uh, the funding comes available, we'll get the reimbursement for it. Uh, and the reason why we're moving forward is we've already been researching this for a year uh, with the different companies and uh, with everybody else now in the state scrambling to try and get away from the, basically you have to move away from the total electronic uh, voting to make sure you have some type of receipt or uh, some type of ballot. So a lot of counties now are going to have to try and move to what we're doing. And in doing that, it's going to create, of course, a shortage on equipment, which probably will mean that, you know, supply and demand, you know, the price will go up. So we're going to try and get in on the front of this so that we don't end up getting a bath in it. So, and this stuff is approved by the Department of State. The election equipment is all approved by the Department of State. So with that all said, any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number 20. I'll make a motion to approve item number 20. It's listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Yeah, motion, by, motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Allen, approve item 20. Open and award the following the review of the solicitor and engineering firm sealed bids for Susquehanna County office building partial roof replacement. Okay. One favor. What? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so the first one is from CD Waterproofing. And 
there's an item one and there's an item two. So the item one is 77,000 and the item two So the total is 78,441. Sure something else hidden in these. What's the name of that company? C&D Waterproofing. The next one is from Dunmore Roofing and Supply. And there's is, let's see, what they start on there. I got 77865. And then they they're second, so they're at 79,533 total, it looks like. And the last one is out of DA Nolp in Berlin, New Jersey. isn't in the same format as the other ones, but it is over 83,000, so it's not the lowest bid. All right, these will move on to the engineering firm first, then the solicitor, and they will determine if they are correct, and we'll award to the lowest person, which I believe at this point is C&D, but it will be confirmed at our next meeting as to who it got awarded to. Any public comment? No bang. Just curious uh, what the three of you found to occupy your time the last week and a half. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea what you've been doing. Well, well, I have a pretty good idea what you've been doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been uh, pretty devastating with the floods and stuff, so I've uh, been extremely busy. So, anybody got anything else? Are all the bridges, county bridges, open? Uh, well, the bridges are open, you just can't get to them. So, uh, we have two that uh, are out in the middle of a field and they're just basically on an island. So we're waiting for the water to get down on those two. Right now we've got about, uh, the number keeps going up every day. We know we have at least probably $600,000 worth of damages to the bridge. It'll probably be triple that by the time we're done. So, it'll probably be closer to a couple million dollars by the time we're done with the damages to the county bridges. And of course, there is no insurance for that. Is there any state money? Nothing yet. And as my last note, I don't believe the federal has declared for us. So right now, that's the problem too. So we just need it, basically. Unless we, uh, we just gotta wait and see what happens. So. If we meet the thresholds in the state, um, there there will be state money. Oh, okay. Um, hopefully, we'll. This, the federal will declare and meet those thresh thresholds also. Is Du Bois Street open yet? Du Bois Street is possible. We're telling people only for local traffic and emergency equipment. Um, I did meet with PennDOT. Uh, they are subbing out a lot of their uh, work because they just can't handle the, the volume of work that needs to be done. Um, so um, there's a couple bridges, like 167, is an issue uh, down by Diaz is that bridge is out. Um, it's probably gonna be a year on that one before it's back. So we're looking at alternatives there to see what we can do there. Um, there's uh, the only other bridge that I know right now at this moment is the one at the end of Liberty Park, but you can go around that on Shadow Brook now. Shadow Brook is back open. Liberty Township did, supervisors did an excellent job. Uh, Shadow Brook was gone completely. Uh, the bridge was there. The water wasn't going under the bridge anymore. It had taken the road out and made a new path. So they do have it back under the bridge and they've got the road rebuilt. So at least now we can get emergency services through there. Steam Hollow Road was closed. Uh, we're hoping by the end of the week that one will be open back up right at the bottom of the New Milford uh, Rod and Gun Club there. Mm -hmm. or fire. Uh, they're working on that. So. Um, 
a lot of the roads are passable, but they're really beat up and chewed up bad. You know, the, um, the shoulders and stuff are really bad and beaten up, so that's a problem. Any other public comment? Ladies at Pours. Can I make a comment about the Disaster Recovery Center? It is open today, 9 until 7 p.m. The numbers were over 100 on Monday, approximately 70 yesterday. And if those numbers continue, we will continue to be open tomorrow. Um, if uh, emergency permits, things like that, if everybody could get it out on social media, if you're out there on social media. Yeah. If they come here, you want an emergency permit to get in and clean a creek out? Just got to come here, DEP's here, the right to permit, and you can get going. If uh, there's a need for uh, flooding victims uh, with uh, school needs, uh, back to school needs, Interfaith is uh, giving backpacks, sneakers, um, groceries, things like that, so that nobody goes back to school without new stuff. So Interfaith is in our DRC and over to their building. We have, um, there is, and unfortunately, whenever you have a disaster, there's always people that are looking to take advantage. We have had reports of people going door to door saying that they're from the county. Uh, they're out doing work for the county, trying to scam people. Um, you know, we need to get out on social media and tell everybody we are not sending people door to door. We don't do that. Uh, so if somebody shows up at their door, they need to call somebody. Don't give them a check. Don't give them money. Don't give them anything. Um, also, um, you know, we have found, I have found, you know, some red tubs and stuff around town. Um, there's no name on the tub as to who's collecting the money. Uh, it just says going for flood relief. I don't know what it's all about. Uh, I will tell everybody today that the commissioners have supported Interfaith. Interfaith supports the commissioners in the community. Anywhere that wants to donate or do anything needs to send the checks to Interfaith. Interfaith has set up a separate account. They have a spreadsheet so when a person comes in, if they need help, they get so much money for each individual thing. Uh, I did talk to the uh, gas companies yesterday. Um, Cabot, Southwestern, Williams, and one more. And DTE. I'm sorry, thank you. DTE Energy, all of them are going to donate five grand a piece, so we're going to get 20 grand in the interfaith right away. Hartford Fair on Saturday is donating a dollar from every ticket to go to interfaith to help people. So, um, you know, so if you know people that want to donate, that's where they need to send their money to interfaith because it will go directly to the victims of the flood. And they've guaranteed us that that money will not leave this county, it will be for Susquehanna County residents and only flood people. So if somebody comes in off the top of a mountain and says, oh, you know, I need this, I need that, they're going to verify and make sure that somebody's not trying to scam them because people will scam. How long is the donation, how long are the donations going to be, uh, uh, how long do we have to make a donation specifically for, like, flood relief? Uh, it'll be it'll be open for quite a while um, because the amount of devastation, the problem that she has is, you know, like right now she can give up to $250 for a furnace. Well, you and I both know a furnace costs a, a lot more than 250 bucks. Yeah. So the more money she gets in, the more she'll be able to go back to all those people and increase the amount of money she's given them. So she has a, basically if she has a person coming in, there's a needs form, they fill it out. She knows what they need and then she can go back if more funds become available so that she can take and send more money to those people to help them. So we need to get as much as we can and keep it moving as long as we can to try and help these people out. One question. Did you get any feedback from any of the schools regarding their transportation with the road closings and bridges and stuff? We have not gotten anything yet. Um, I know we're like right around the corner for school to start. Yeah. So I know they're all scrambling trying to figure out we do have on our website, we get daily updates from PennDOT as for road closures. So that is on our website so people can look at and the schools have that also. That is at Oak Lakes Board meeting and they did say they were going to have to reroute some buses. Right. I mean, even if the roads are open, the bridges might not be able to accommodate a bus full of kids anymore. Right. The weight limits are changing. Right. Some of the dirt roads that they may have been used to run a 70 passenger bus on, they may have to send a 16 passenger yeah. bus on. You know, just because the roads, there's no shoulders and there's big, huge ditches and, 
you know, a lot of the roads eaten away. So all it, of our county schools open the same day. Do they all open? No, I think no. no Little I, Ridge opens a week later after Labor Day. Right. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah. That's what I was told yesterday. Yeah, I believe that's correct. There's a lot of activity at Blue Ridge right now. I wonder if they're just, I don't know what they're doing. They're doing, I, well, they're doing some work up there. I know that. Okay. Um, so it will take, you know, some of the stuff, PennDOT's already said some of these bridges, it's going to be a year before they get fixed. <clears throat> Time they get, get them out to, to bid, they get engineered, they get specced. You know, we're already into, listen, we're, all, we're knocking on September. We only got a month, a month and a half of build left, and we're going to be pushing snow again. And let's hope we don't have as much snow as we had rain this summer. Right, Jack? That's for sure. <laughs> I would like to say, on behalf of a resident of New Milford Township, that I was very impressed with how quickly they got out and got the roads at least passable again, so that where the road was completely eaten away by water erosion, at least you could drive through. Um, yeah, and you're absolutely right. I mean, the townships and everybody has worked very hard. Hats off to PennDOT. You know, they really worked hard. Uh, we had crews out on PennDOT on Du Bois Street Saturday and Sunday work, mm -hmm. which, yeah. you know, is rare. And, uh, you know, that section alone, which was probably about, uh, I want to say, maybe 500 feet long was the worst section of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually, it got to the point where we had to... Uh, uh, they didn't have enough resources, uh, so they had called us, and we had sent a tree company out because they needed somebody that had a bar on a chain over 40 inches to cut trees, and because uh, the trees were that big, and uh, so we sent a guy out to cut, and then Saturday and Sunday we had, uh, thanks to RHL, uh, we had a logging truck out there on Saturday and Sunday. They took over 50 loads of trees out of that 500-foot section. And uh, just to clean that road so they get one lane of road back into it. That's amazing. So uh, our immediate concern is fire and rescue and ambulance, making sure the roads are open enough to get them out there. That is why we have a concern right now with 167 South. Uh, United is a backup for Hot Bottom. And, you know, if Hot Bottom has an issue for United to get there, they'd have to go down Shopping Creek if they could even get a truck down that. Uh, by the time they get there, whatever the disaster was or incident was, it'd be well over by the time they could get there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to try and see what we can do to move that along. So so there is a lot of work to be done. Everybody's doing a great job. Hats off to all the township supervisors, municipalities, all the workers, PennDOT people. They've all done a great job. Our 911 people. 911 yeah, people. Yeah, you know, all our job. people, our ELC center, they've all, they've all done good work. So... Anything else? Amen to what you just said. Reggie, you got any questions, Reggie? No. All right, all right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Motion by Chris Warren, second by Chris Warren to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all for coming.